Hey guys, what's going on? So a few weeks ago, I got a call from the one and only Mr. Cletus McFarland stating that I won the Super Tahoe giveaway. So if you guys don't remember, he gave this truck away a few weeks ago and um, I'm just now getting to this video. Wanted a few things to die down a little bit, get some paperwork settled and whatnot, but the truck is officially mine. It is titled to me, it is registered to me, it is insured by me. So this is my truck now which is super awesome. It's actually pretty still crazy to say to myself, um, but I am going to give you guys a cool, hopefully a cool video, a nice overview of the truck built by Killer Performance. And uh, we're gonna talk about some plans and some things that I wanna do to the truck. Well, I want to just kind of make it my own, but also to import, improve the performance and drivability of this thing. So let's get right into it. So we definitely gotta start with the exterior of the truck in this beautiful paint with only 50 some odd thousand miles on it so this paint was done uh, with a paint correction service um i don't remember who did it but it was from the guys at killer performance the hood has a clear bra on it i believe the roof and the um tailgate if you want to call it does too so we got some clear corners up front tahoe grill and bumper to match obviously remember this is a 96 yukon um vin wise but they convert it to look like a Tahoe. So everything you see here was done by Killer Performance with the weld wheels. These are 20s in the front, 20s by the back. I'm not sure of the specs. I wanna say these are probably a 20 by eight. We got the 245 4020s in the front. It is on a 5.7 drop by IHC suspension. And these are AZ, AZ Pro Performance disc brakes. And they are pretty large brakes. So comparison to my hand there, yeah, very large brakes, really good stuff. But yeah, this paint is just flawless. I mean, you can literally see the reflection of the ring. Look, there's the Ranger right there. Super sweet paint, really love this color. In the back, we got some 295 4020s right there. Nitto NT Triple Five G2s. And um, when I was trying to do the uh, little burnout bash on the in the Freedom Factory, I, this thing was swaying a lot and I'll show you guys a clip of that. I um, actually started getting to the tire a little bit, not so bad on this side, but on the other side it's much worse and I'll show you that here shortly. But yeah, the paint on this thing is immaculate, the glass is not scratched. None of it is, well, actually it's pretty damn close to being perfect actually. It's extremely, extremely clean. Go ahead and show you guys that tire so you can see right here it was rubbing down right so this thing has a lot of body sway to it um partially because there's no factory rear sway bar so that is definitely on the plan to get a factory rear sway bar on that it's got an air motive in tank pump and killer performs also did a he a uh, a big video series on this truck as well building it from start to finish and as you guys know, it is powered by an LT4 supercharged LT1. So the block is an LT1, rod and piston LT1 with, uh, well, sorry, I should say stock rod, stock piston. So it's an LT1 short block or long block, I guess you could say, with a small cam in it. And it has the LT4 blower, I believe stock manifold or sorry, stock throttle body. I believe this snout portion, so the portion right here is ported. Uh, can't confirm that just yet. It has the tall lid for the intercooler. I'm not sure if it has the tall intercooler bricks in it or not. Um, that's something we're gonna have to take a look at as well. They had this powder coated to match the truck. It's a little bit off, but still looks pretty cool. I actually kind of like the uh, the offset green, kind of matches the belt, it's pretty cool. It's on a grip tech pulley. I think it's a 2.3 pulley or a 2.5. Yeah, a 2.5 pulley right there. A little bit smaller than stock and it's on the stock camaro zl1 crank you guys see the suspension right there tubular upper and lower control arms like i said this is a 5.7 drop we got the cordes performance intercooler tank obviously feeding the lt4 supercharger so we have motion raceworks billet valve covers for lt super sweet super clean looking uh, don't know the header design. I, I want to say they're stainless headers or they're speed engineering headers. Um, don't know. Don't, I don't see any uh, labeling or branding on it. 
We do have a catch can Motion Raceworks right there. Also Motion Raceworks uh, flex fuel adapter or sensor plug-in. We got the Dietrichworks uh, in-tank fuel pump, or sorry, in-line fuel pump. So when this sees um, any type of uh, map pressure, any type of boost pressure, it actually kicks the secondary pump on, which is in line um, and feeds it some extra fuel. Stock ABS stuff, stock brake stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I think that brake master cylinder is leaking a little bit, which is not very uncommon for a truck that's only got 56,000 miles. It's from 96, so things sit, things get bad, things start to go bad, so that's all right. Uh, stock radiator, 96. They do have some fans on there. I'm not sure. I want to say they're 12-inch fans. I don't know who makes them or who makes the bracket. Um, probably something we're going to look into in the future as well as upgrading that. Nice little overflow tank for the radiator. Decent battery. Custom inner, inter, uh, custom cold air intake. Um, I don't know if they cut the hole in the fender or if that was there. It doesn't look factory, but it might be. But um, yeah, so it's got a five inch intake, like I said, to the stock throttle body, which could always be an upgrade later. Um, yeah, Motion Raceworks catch can, um, Spear Tech harness and ECU TCU setup. So all the wiring you see on the car is from Spear Tech. It's got the under hood light, of course, still works, which is pretty sweet. But yeah, it's pretty much up here. Um, I think it put down 686 when they dynoed it last. It's on pump E85 flex fuel, so you can run 93 or E85, which it's currently on. We have the intercooler pump down there. Um, I think that's really about it for the engine side. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. So yeah, it's a pretty sweet deal. Obviously there's tons of things we can do with this. We can always go to a smaller upper or a larger lower pulley, make more boost. But since it is on a stock bottom LT1, I uh, don't really want to push that too hard. So if it's making 686 to the wheels, it's making some good crank power. And honestly, it's actually quite a bit for this truck. It really lights those 295s right up. So they have no problem with that at all. Um, yeah, so that's all I can really think about telling you guys up here. Um, like I said, there's no sway bars on the truck. There's no rear sway bar, no front sway bar. So I definitely plan on doing sway bars. Um, looking at some Bell Tech stuff right now. It's for lower trucks. I don't know if it'll fit the 5.7 drop, but we will verify. I think it's one of be the first things I do is uh, sway bars, a couple handling mods, a um, couple appearance things, and I'll tell you that why here in a little bit. But um, yeah, other than that, we're probably going to keep the engine stock for now. Possibly looking into the future to do a bottom end swap, right? So swap the bottom end either to LT4 stuff or to some nicer stuff that will handle much more horsepower. So like I was saying, it's running all off of a Spear Tech Harness ECU TCU setup. So here's their relays and fuses for that. So really clean setup by the guys at Killer Performance. Really nice and detailed. The interior is bone stock. I mean, this thing is bone stock. There's not a single thing changed in the interior other than some wiring. Oh, actually I lied. We have the Dakota Digital dashes. So. I remember when uh, they did the giveaway on this and everybody and their mother was complaining that some of the gauges didn't work. They got to fix the gauges, got to fix the gauges. Well, they fixed the gauges, guys. I can confirm that all the gauges work. It's actually got oil temp, oil pressure, trans temp. Um, it's got 60 foot times. It's got zero to 60 times. It's got quarter mile times. That dash is badass. I'm not gonna lie. That thing is super sweet. So yeah, a lot of functionality with that. and. Uh, Really a uh, huge thank you to the guys at the Cleves McFarland shop, McFarland Racing, for putting that in because now I don't have to do it. it. Saves me money and time. All right, coming over here to the captain's side. So like I was mentioning, the Dakota Digital Dash does work. Everything works on it. Start it up for you. And it's got a lot of cool stuff, right? This is what I was saying. I can switch. There's a little toggle switch down here. Right there, you can switch the screens from wherever you want over here. So oil pressure, temperature, outside air temp, intake air temp. Go ahead and let you guys hear the cam. So 
Somebody, some of you guys might be thinking that you'll never win these giveaways, right? I was one of those people. I just bought the shirt, one, because I liked it. Two, I like to support other channels and whatnot. Um, I got a phone call literally from Cletus McFarling telling me that I won this truck. And I didn't believe it. I could not believe it. It was pretty awesome. He did a video on the giveaway as well. Um, super cool time. Super awesome guys to work with and just be around. You know, it was super comfortable and a really cool, awesome experience to do. So really once in a lifetime thing. So if you guys don't think you could ever win these things, you're wrong because you really can. Because I was one of those guys. I never thought I was going to win this. But here we are. I got the damn LT4 Super Tahoe in my driveway, which is awesome super awesome this thing is turnkey it's ready to go take it on sick week like they did take to the drag strip i mean just it, it this truck does everything it turns heads everywhere i go and it's such a badass truck so thank you to the guys at cletus mcfarland for doing the, the giveaway and thank you to the guys at killer performance for doing the build series in the first place so without them none of this would be here which is super awesome so um plans for the truck we can do a lot of things with this, right? Like I just mentioned, we can do sick week. Um, we can go on dragon drives. We can go to car shows. It's that clean. It's got 55, 56,000 original models on it. It's just such a bad, bad unit, right? Um, obviously we can upgrade the supercharger. We can get it ported, throttle body, lower pulley, upper pulley, bunch of stuff we can do. I'm gonna focus on handling first. This thing drives like the Titanic. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to get sway bars, looking at some Belltech sway bars for lower trucks. I do need to verify if they work with the 5.7 drop because I have seen a few people have clearance issues with 5.7 drop. So we're going to go with that first and see if that'll work. If that works, I'll get those installed. Um, probably going to be the first things I do. But yeah, just overall, such a badass truck. And um, I'm not going to end the, the video off here. I'm going to do something to it first, and I'll show you guys that before we end off the video and i think it's gonna be the sway bars so yeah just stay tuned we'll get uh get our first upgrade on the super tahoe giveaway back to our sway bars like i mentioned the rear never had a sway bar so this is a rear sway bar from a 1992 to a 95 suburban two-door um same rear end same style suspension we do have to modify the frame a little bit in beltex instructions I'll show you guys the picture. Basically, there's a hole. No, not that one. Where is it? Right here. Is it that? Yeah. We have to drill a hole in the frame to be able to put our our end links up. Basically, attach the sway bar to the frame. So, um, he uses these kind of like exhaust style hangers. It's like pulling out. He uses this to wrap around the rear end. And then there's a plate in there. But this will sit like that. So the sway bar will sit basically on top of the, or underneath the rear end. And then they give us two different sizes hardware. This will be for the end link. This is for the lowering side. I don't know if these are going to be short enough since the truck is so low. I'm, it doesn't specify um, the, the range of how low the truck may be. And then moving on to the front, we have front anti-sway bar. For a C1500, 2500, 6 and 8 lug, SS454, and C3500. Now, this guy is just straight beef. This is a huge sway bar. Um, it's actually very heavy. The truck right now, if you can imagine piloting a cruise ship in the ocean on like 30 foot waves, this is kind of what it feels like to, uh, to pilot it around. So, and I'll actually give you a good example of that. It's no fault to get to the guys that built the truck. But as I was trying to flat thrash this thing around, you can see, and these have been cut. These fenders have, or the, the rear end has been cut, right, to clearance for the tires. You can see that it had, you know, what is that? That's almost three inches of body roll, enough to scrape the tire. And it's like that on both sides. So we don't want that. It's not ideal. All right, those are new tires. I don't want to waste them. So, sway bars, we're going to get them installed. And um, it's probably going to be a little hard to show you guys how to install them. Pretty straightforward, but I'll go through the process. And we can see how they fit. Okay, quick update. Got the rear sway bar installed. 
plenty of clearance room on the diff cover and as you can see kind of at that front link I drilled my holes to a 9 16th hole just like the instructions are calling for got my end links up in there um, surprisingly they're not too short I thought they were gonna be too sh or sorry too long but um, right now I'll try to show you guys the best I can but the sway bar is pretty level with the uh, ground so that's pretty good um, the more angle you have up the stiffer it will be and the more angle you have down the less uh, less stiff it'll be um, if my memory serves me right so very simple install again this truck did not have the factory mounting locations at all um, but you can see just basically uses this little exhaust hanger and then the bushing and there's a, a big thick plate in the middle so yeah very straightforward um, worst part is crawling under this thing as you can see I do have it on a piece of wood but even still the tank hangs so low and uh, I can barely get under here so yeah don't exactly miss working on lowered cars but but goddamn does it look good all right so yeah really quick e easy install um, and then once we get the parts for the front we'll go ahead and knock that out all right you guys we got our front sway bar on using our IHC lowering uh, sway bar end links as you can see right there those, those guys are super short so it works actually pretty well with our Beltec sway bar so I did have to cut the airbag sensor off and it is very close to the frame there but full travel it does not hit I've already tested it um, we're gonna go for a quick drive just to make sure but everything is installed and what a pain in the neck I will say this is so um, very short end links um, seem to be fine right now, but like I said, we're going to go for a quick drive.
Tahoe is not going anywhere. There's much more we're going to do to it just to overall improve the performance of this thing and how it handles and drives. So stay tuned for some future episodes and see what we end up doing with this thing. So like always, you guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. We'll see you in the next video.